Okay everyone, welcome back to the channel today. We're on GT Sport and we're back with a quick go through all the daily races for this new week. So first up we have Daily Race C at Old Wallace in Group 1. So remember if you do enjoy these videos and you do like them, remember to hit that thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already subscribed and hit that notification button so you do not miss any future videos. And also let me know in the comments which race you'll be racing from A, B or C and which races you've already raced, how you've experienced them, if you've had any you know, incidents in them. Let me know in the comments section which is your preferred choice etc for this week so let's get this race underway we're using the toyota this is a preferred car the tso 50 i think it is or something like that um for daily for the race now for time trial you will probably use the audi because that is going to be a faster car when it comes to time trial and only just though because i did have a little go on my main account and i didn't really put i only did a few laps but it, this toyota would definitely do a 28 1 28 2 something like that i think the audi though can get into the um 27s i think it is i might be on the totally wrong time zone here for the laps but yeah um i think it's a 27 now you can get done as we go into turn one and p17 just completely sends p16 to the shadow realm but luckily the penalty system works there and gives him a nice two second penalty so that's quite thankful for me because now we're going to get an extra position and we actually get it sooner than we thought because he then drives straight off the track um, so yeah, two positions gained straight away from the start without any effort. We're starting on the medium tyres. Now, we all know this track. The only way you're going to make passes here, really, it's so difficult to overtake here when you're in the slipstream because of the dirty air. It's really hard to follow through these sections of track. So fast forward in the action here. Well, I think the cars in front were actually on the soft tyres at this stage, some of them anyway. But yeah, we're on the mediums, trying to work our way through, and we're going to go for a very risky strategy. Now, I don't recommend everyone try this, but... There's a big reason why I'm doing this, because if we put these soft tyres on now, we're going to get such a huge undercut. You can see the pit lane loss is around 17 seconds, I believe, looking at the delta. When we pitted, it was, we were 9 seconds behind the leader, or around about 9 seconds, and quite around about 26 seconds. So yeah, 26, 25, it's around 17 second pit lane loss. So as we start lap 3, we've jumped 1 position. So going into turn 1, always look for that 100 board for your braking zone see on the braking zone there down to third gear and then hold that third gear briefly before second gear on the power nice and early and then you're going to work your weight into the next braking zone which i always look between the 100 and the 50 board just to start your braking so just in between there down to third gear a little shift down to second to help the rotation a little um, burst of power and then you will go into third gear briefly then back down to second try and break early for this corner get the car in a straight line first gear then slowly feed that throttle back in on the power nice and early and then swing the car from that curb on the right hand side get it down to third gear and just wait be very patient on the full throttle before you get on the throttle there because too early and it understands wide now we're going to be looking for the left arrow just before the 50 ball just there on the right hand side braking aggressively just before that down to first gear one advice with this car is don't downshift it too fast try and be quite gentle with your downshifting now we're going into this really fast right hand corner just before the 50 ball chucking it in fourth gear a little shift down to third then back to fourth you're going to see me playing with the shift through there and back into third gear trying to get the rotation and then through here trying to break reasonably early because you don't want to swing it too far wide you want to try and stay in the middle of the track there second gear accelerate through the corner throw it into this last section here in third gear and then power all the way up into this final corner which is a very tricky one you want to try and hold it tight to the apex down to second gear and then get on the throttle as early as you can whilst keeping it to that apex that will give you nice exit speed we go over the line with pretty much full fuel still one minute 30.6 it's not a particularly great lap i actually think it, you'd probably get in the 29s once you're up to speed but this was our first race of the day so yeah just wanted to give you a little bit of tips for uh, hot lap in the race conditions obviously so then working your way now we're going to go through sector one and i think we actually go quite a bit purpley you see yeah so that shows you just that first lap wasn't particularly brilliant but yeah so far strategy is okay because we've got a nice bit of clean air and this is one of the big reasons you're giving yourself so much space on the track while all them other cars are fighting in dirty air you've got a nice bit of clean air as we come to the end of the lap and we go over the line and you see we're gaining more positions there when they've, they've decided to pit now. So we're now up to P14. And we're very close to P13 and 12. We see one car's got a penalty up there as we're fast forward in the action. You can see, I'm not sure if that's a one second or a half a second. It's probably a, it's probably a track limit one, so only a half a second. But we've got P13 and 12. But however, the person with the penalty, I think he got on the grass on the acceleration there, just off the curb. And yeah, spun it on the power and he's out of... Um, contention for this race so that's one driver out the way again getting quite lucky with these people making a few mistakes and stuff but we're now up to p13 we've got p12 right in front of us 
and we're going to get very close to picking up that dirty air. So this might be our first experience of driving in the dirty air around this track. Um, it all depends if what lap he's going to be pitting. A lot of people have already done their pit stops. It all depends what tyre he started on, etc. If we go through this long right-hand corner on the pile nice and early. And thankfully for us, two cars in front of me. Again, nicely pit right in front of me, putting me up to P10, top 10 already. So we've gone from P18 to P10 without even doing a single overtake. Um, so we're going to skip again to the end of the next lap there, end of lap 6 here now. And we have a driver that's... This is one... Um, bit of advice, you have to be very cautious on the pit entry if you go a little bit wrong, hit the wall it resets you back to track so you lose an insane amount of time, but now we've got a battle for P6, going into the braking zone, we break nice and late, hold the apex nice and early and we've managed to get the car into the top 6 again, that was our first kind of overtake really in the race because everything's been done through the pit lane strategy, this is why this race is going to be quite interesting this week I think, because I think there's going to be opportunities to really go for some brave strategies so it's a bit different than some of the other weeks um like daily race c last week was all about the fuel saving and you know taking your overtakes when you get them this week seems more of a strategy battle and i actually think it might be reasonably fun it's gonna be a, a frustrating race sometimes but you have to accept that with a, a group one race at a track like this but there's opportunities to you know try something different maybe you know maybe start on the softer tire and try and get you know past a few drivers and then give yourself some clean air or the opposite like i've done here very early pit stop as we go down the straight and we see a lot of the cars have gone in the pits there and this is going to be interesting where are we going to come out it looks like we're in to p3 as we see a car just coming out the pits there and we're up into p3 so from p18 to p3 with this strategy the question is will these tires last i was running the brake bias on i think started the race plus two on the softs and with the medium tires i would recommend about plus one or zero plus one but with the soft tires plus three and i actually went up to plus four towards the end to try and save the front tires a little bit but yeah so far tires are still holding out and i mean the tire the tire wear is time six there's no fuel saving in this race so tire wear is time six that is quite high for soft tires at a track like this however i think that the reason this strategy's worked so well is because it's just such a huge undercut and you're not battling so yeah up to p3 and you can see actually skipping through to the final lap we've not actually lost a huge amount of time so we actually gained three temps from when he came out of the pits on the fresh mediums now some of these drivers are not probably the fastest drivers ever but it does show you that the soft tires can still be competitive but yeah on the last lap i found the lap 12 on these soft tires it was starting to get a little bit understeery and stuff so you had to be a bit cautious but we've got a massive gap behind this so we didn't really need to take any risks as we see coming through here braking and yeah just a bit of understeer kicking in there you can see as the leader actually had a penalty and you can see p2 obviously getting as aggressive as he can because if he gets within one second of him he's going to take the lead um but for me there's no chance of me getting anywhere near them I'm, i i've got no grip so we're just trying to survive and get it home for a nice p3 from p18 very acceptable position we see p1 manages to just about hold on to that p1 but yeah we drove pretty nice race there um just on the three seconds behind the leader from the back of the grid at a track you can't overtake strategy is very important obviously for that one next race we had daily race b i set a lap time i think we did three two or three laps in time trial and i didn't think it was a particularly great lap it was a fifth what was it let's have a little look here it was a 44.2 in the mustang um and it actually worked out that was p1 i was quite surprised at that we're gonna fast forward to the start of the race and yeah the mclaren seems quite strong and there's quite a few cars i think that'll be quite enjoyable to drive at this one so i think this might be an enjoyable race this week so i think the bop might not be too bad for this race obviously tire wear's not on but yeah, i think it might be quite an entertaining one to do as a quick little sprint race so Going into turn one, we break just before the 100 board on the left because obviously we're not going as fast. But you see, the car behind just comes from nowhere. It kind of pushes us out the way a little bit there. I just didn't expect him to do that, but it was a bit aggressive. But yeah, we're just going to carry on and see if we can get him back. So we got the McLaren in front of us now, down to P3. Let's see if we can get past that McLaren as quick as possible as he goes. He's really weird through there. I don't know whether he just totally missed the apex or what. But now through here, downshift into fourth and just letting the car coast a little bit. But that McLaren, I don't know why he's going so slow through these corners because the McLaren is actually pretty quick around this track. And then into this left-hand corner, we go for the move, hop on the inside, hop into P2 again, and a nice move there, nice and clean. And now we've got to try and get up to P1. You see, P1, though, has got a bit of a gap. He's actually out, outside the slipstream range. And the RCZ 
it's not the easiest car to catch up, but into the braking zone here, we're gonna brake nice and early. Downshift the first just quickly there. Gives you a little bit of extra rotation with the Mustang. It actually gives you a really nice amount of uh, rotation, the Mustang, when you go down the shift sometimes. So yeah, bear that in mind with this Mustang. I think it's actually, going by my time trial lap, I think this Mustang can get um, pretty competitive lap time. Probably a 43.5 if you really wanna push it, 43.4, something like that. It definitely feels strong. So, yeah, it could be a pretty strong car for this track in general. I think the McLaren, Mustang, Jag, um, FF cars are going to be quite strong here as we just come out this final corner. And you can see we're just outside the slipstream range because that RCZ has just got such good acceleration into the braking zone, in through turn one, and just trying to stay as close as we can through there. All, all the acceleration zones, the RCZ seems to pull away, but through the corners and braking, the Mustang seems a bit better. Obviously, the braking is very good on the RCZ, but you can rotate the car so well with this Mustang as we go into that braking zone, just braking just underneath the board above our head map. Down, downshift the first again, then early upshift the second. And just look how much time that's gained as we've actually got ourselves into the slipstream now of P1 and possibly in a position to have a look at going for a move somewhere. Now we just got to try and get this braking right. We downshifted a little bit too early here. We went down to second gear and you can see, I actually braked too early. I had to kind of do a weird early upshift into third there. Um, just trying to stay in the slip stream. Into this final corner, down into third, then second gear, and then back up to third, just to try and get a nice smooth exit. As we get quite a strong exit there, and we're gonna have a really, really strong slip stream down this straight now, because we've got a really strong exit from that corner. And we're going to try and go for a move up into turn one. But can we pull off the move? I do tend to like doing that fake up here, um, if you ever watched us in the past. So let's see. We go into slipstream. We're going to stay to the left here. And you can see, we're going to go for the fake. We stay to the left. He kind of falls for it. He goes back to the left, but then he double defends and starts turning to the right. And once you hit someone in the braking zone, you have no brakes at all. But we both kind of just couldn't stop the car. Um, we're going to have a little watch that. You're going to see what I, I mean by that double defense. So as we go left here, you can see it in slow motion. He goes right, so he's made his defensive move. That's his defensive move. So he's then going to come back over to the left as, I, as he thinks I've gone that way. And then he goes back again across the track and starts turning right in front of me. And yeah, that was a little... I don't... It's a hard one. But a little bit aggressive from both sides. I think he actually said it was all fine. He actually said it was a good move. So no hardship at the end of the race. But we got ourselves ahead there and up into P1. And yeah, um... That was the end of this race pretty much not much else to do in the race because we managed to keep ahead we, we didn't really have to push towards the end either um we finished the p1 but i think this race might be actually a reasonably enjoyable one because of the different cars that you can use um slipstream you'll be able to stay with even a dominant car here with something else so yeah it should be quite enjoyable to try a few different cars out on that one um it's something i'll probably do through the week with streaming and stuff but now we've got possibly the most fun but most frustrating race of the week daily race a and yeah that is a big surprise to hear me say that that this race could be the most fun race because dragon trail gardens is not my favorite track as most people will know however what i kind of like about this race is the cars they've picked all hot hatches all hot hatches and they all actually seem pretty reasonably close in terms of pace for the race as well especially when you've got a slipstream one thing i will say is the Clio doesn't seem to be very fast off the start. You see the Golf seems to get a slightly faster start on acceleration. So yeah, I'm in the Clio for this one. I actually I did do two races in this. So there is going to be another race after this first one. Because it's quite a weird one. It's like it's either going to really frustrate you or it's going to actually be a pretty entertaining race. So yeah, I decided to go with the Clio for the first one. Uh, as you can see here. Go through there, we saw a gap open. And then back up, we give him space on the right hand side. However, he doesn't give us a space, but he just cuts right across my front end there, which completely messes up the exit that we get. So we're back down to P12. Fast forward the action on the straight and then into the braking zone. We're going to break just before the 100 ball. You see quite a bit before the 100 ball on the right. You want to make sure you brake nice and early, as a lot of people seem to be missing the braking there. Trying to take a tight line through the corner on the power as early as we can. And now accelerating up into this very tricky section, especially in these cars with very little grip. Obviously, these cars understeer quite a lot. So sections like the track like this, it's all about getting the car rotated, which this was my first race today. We didn't do a time trial. We just jumped into the race. And, um, yeah, it was just trying to learn the way the cars handle. But we see a lot of chaos on the right-hand side, a lot of chaos in front of us, cars going free wide. And this is why I think this race could be really entertaining but frustrating. You can see there's a lot of contact that goes on in this race. And it's kind of to be expected because it's slow cars, and it's road cars and it's a track where 
you can get a lot of free wide situations a lot of corners that kind of encourage like you to send it up the inside you can see through here we've got a car on the inside they're going to go too wide through the corner we managed to break just a little bit later in that car on our right and then try and hold the tight line through here to take that position so we're up to p10 again uh, managed to gain a few positions there and then we're going to obviously fast forward the action on this straight just briefly until we get the end of the straight as yeah it's just a straight line in the slipstream and then the red car on the inside looks like he was going to go for a move there it would have been a very brave move i can say that but we get quite a nice strong exit off the corner we're actually going to go for a move on the inside but yeah he just comes across the our front end again and he completely kills that <laughs> the driver in the um, blue golf there he cuts the corner and almost kills him. I'm very surprised he didn't pick up a penalty for that as we see a penalty up ahead. And the car behind us actually cut the whole of the apex of the corner behind us to get the move on us. And he actually picked up a one second penalty for it. So he just completely missed the corner to get the overtake done, but got a one second penalty. I'm surprised that wasn't more than that actually. But yeah, absolute chaos going off here. You can see up ahead there's a car being punted there. We're going to go down the left hand side, accelerate as early as we can, giving space on the right hand side. We don't want to push them off on the right hand side, so making sure that we give them some space. And now we're getting squeezed a little bit to the left hand side. We've got to make sure we've got a car's whip to get through the corner. And we've managed to get ourselves up into P8 as we've got cars in front with a penalty. A lot of action going off in front of us. This corner here is where I was struggling because, like I say, we hadn't done any time trial. And this driver just, yeah, he just pushes us straight off the track. Um, it seems like a, it does seem like this is going to happen a lot of this combination. People are just going to, as you can see there, just push you off. They, they're not going to worry about where you are on the track. As we get completely shunted off on the final corner there. Oh, sorry. On the long right-hand corner before the final corner. As we fast-forward the action until when we actually manage to catch them up again. We see we're back up into P12 there. Right behind P11 as we went for a move into the braking zone. He managed to get a bit of an undercut on us there, which is all fair. Um, but through here, you see we're in the slipstream. We've got one more lap after this one to try and get any moves done. But this race, at this point, this was the first race there. And I was thinking, mm, this race could be a bit annoying. Um, it's not my favorite track it could be a bit annoying but luckily we did decide to do another race after we did this one as we go through this final this long right hand corner i'm saying it again but we've got two cars one punts another one off we're going to go down the inside and we've managed to take that position so up into p11 and he actually ran wide again with the dirty size that car got a two second penalty for the hit that he did on him so yeah that's going to be two positions again so we're in back into p10 um, not really much positions gained so far in this race but a lot of action that's what I was going to you know, there is a lot of fun to be had in this race, I think, as we see a gap on the inside, although there wasn't much of a gap there. But we returned the favour for the squeeze that he did on us before, and we get ourselves back up to P9. And this is the kind of racing you're going to have to, I think you've got to actually give it out as well as, um, as long as you're not being, like, wiping someone out the race, I think you've got to drive it like touring car style. You've got to be a little bit aggressive, otherwise you're just going to get your pants pulled down on this one, I'm telling you. It's really, really... Um, it's not for the people that don't want any contact, let's just say that. But I will say it does seem to be quite fun. They're not my favourite cars. It's probably my most hated track on the game. However, I think this race will be fun. As we see another car with a penalty up in front of us and through here, this car in front just couldn't really get the line through here sorted. You can see he was a little bit messy through there, but we're in P9. Can we go for a move into P8 as we see penalties being taken? And one thing I would say is the penalty zone doesn't seem to really affect the car that much here because... You, you know one second penalty in these type of cars doesn't actually cost you a massive amount as we've got the driver on the right going to go for a move there is he going to go for that no he's not um we're going to take the tight line get on the power as early as we can but he just decides to push us off the track and this is what i'm saying it's going to happen a lot you're going to have a lot of instances like that where drivers just they just don't care they're just going to push you clean off the track and um i think that's the second time he's done that to us in this race actually but it's to be expected because of the combination that it is but it's it is going to be fun though um kind of if you can have a fun race as you can see in the next race we're going to go again um for the next race we're going to choose a different cars we fast forward the action not really anything going on here we're just in the slipstream and um, we're going to finish the race in p10 so not the most enjoyable now i was tempted to just say ah oh, do you know what we're going to leave it at that but i decided to go again because i was convinced there was a lot of fun to be had on this race so i decided to try the golf out this time different car actually gets a better start you can see it on the, with the clear in p7 just doesn't get the initial traction that the golf gets so that is one advantage that the golf, the golf has as this driver tries to cut off that line not going to work we've got our car there so 
we're going to probably take that position from him through this corner and straight away gain in a position up into P8. But you can see up ahead, there's a three wide situation going on there or two wide. That driver in front, the Spanish driver, just completely tries to block the um, blue goal from going up the inside there as we go through here. Trying to get the line through here, trying to skim that apex and then jump over this curb ever so slightly. You can see you can jump over the curb quite easily as we're going right up behind them there. Um, but yeah, that's one thing I will say is you can actually jump that curb pretty comfortably in these cars. You don't really get much of an issue. Just be cautious of the track limit through there. Very easy to pick up a half a second penalty. So into this braking zone again, brake nice and early. As we go into the braking zone here, we're going to slow it down. For some reason, he's decided to start turning right, right into my line. That was a Spanish driver that tried to block the driver before. And then he pushes us off. We've got cars all off the track. Absolute chaos going off in this race. But so far, we haven't lost out too much. We lost out a bit then. We were going past the Spanish driver, but he just turned right into a left-hand corner. That You know what I mean? Not really the thing you'd do, but yeah. We're up into P7, and we've got chaos in front of us again as we're going to try and stay into fourth gear nice and early there. Get a drag out of this corner. Get a run out of this corner. And now we're into this very tricky right-hand corner. It's going to be so easy for cars to get took out of this corner. Um, as long as the car gets on your inside, you're going to find a lot of drivers just push you off pretty much. Um, I guarantee a lot of you will be pushed off on that corner throughout this week and it will get frustrating but like i say there's fun to be had on this one um, and we will be doing this on our second account 100 percent as we go to have a little look up the inside so we fake that so that he goes for the dive in this corner and it works a treat he goes aggressive sends it up the inside i break nice and early thank you very much three positions in one corner up into p4 absolute perfection i absolutely love that move planned it to perfection we planned i went for the fake down left forced him into breaking late and going for the dive on them we break early tuck in on the inside and take three positions in one corner so a very nice move there and now we're up to p4 and these drivers up here seem a little bit more calm than the drivers behind us as we see it's all kicking off behind us still in that mirror but it's nice to get it away from them and this is what i'm saying if you get in with the the drivers that are going to, if you, by the end of the week, hopefully when people have sussed this race out, the racing could be quite enjoyable around here. It could actually provide quite good racing because there's so many different lines that you can take. Like even into this corner here, you can go aggressive in the braking zone, tuck up on the inside or go wide and then get an undercut. It's, it's very good for the racing. You can see the drivers in front giving a perfect example of this. Now, they're going to go side by side through there because there's two different lines. Now, the car on the outside line gets a better traction. However, the car on the inside then has a tighter line through the corner. It's... It's quite an entertaining track for these type of cars as we decided to break a little bit early here and try and get a nice entry into this corner. So try and swing it in and get on the power nice and early to see if we can go for a move down the right hand side. We're not going to be able to send that from there. It's a little, it would be a little bit too aggressive. However, he goes all out of shape into the corner. So I'm going to go nice and tight to the apex. We're going to give him a little nudge there, but we managed to get past and without shoving him off. A little bit of contact like that I think is fair. In these type of races we saw the inside gap he made the mistake we take advantage of that and now we're into the final um, final corner of the end of lap two so a lot of action for two laps of racing there um you know insane amount of action as he goes for a little look up the inside but yeah we're going to close that door take a nice tight line through this corner be careful you don't break too late for that corner and run off onto that runoff area it's very easily done fast forward the action up the straight uh, we're in the slipstream to P2 now. Let's see if we can catch up to the leaders in this race as we see P1 going very wide. P2 taking almost a very narrow line through that corner. Trying to break on that 100 board there, I would recommend. Trying to skim the apex of the curb and then try and get the car over this sausage curb right in the middle. And again, just be cautious on this one. You can actually do that without hitting the sausage curb. It might be a bit safer like I did there. And then working your way into this braking zone. Trying to keep it nice and smooth. And again, this is the tricky section. As we're right behind P2 now, you can see we're gonna go for it. We're gonna go slow down the action now to normal pace as we lose the rear, but that kind of gives us a nice tight line through the corner. And he runs a little bit wide, so we're gonna actually be able to go for a move through that long right hand corner again. So that's two moves in that corner done, and both of them clean. I think that one was definitely clean. The one before had a little bit of contact, but like I say, you're gonna get a little bit of contact. So we're up into P2 from P10 in this race. And I've actually enjoyed it um, so far. We've got one lap to go. However, we've got about a one second gap to P1. So unless he makes any massive mistakes in this race, it's going to be very, very difficult to try and catch him up, I think, as we go over with a purple lap there, 55.4. Not a brilliant lap, but it's not 
by any means a terrible lap. Um, obviously, I don't really like FF cars. As we go through, again, through this section, trying to keep it nice and smooth. Fast forward the action as we're just trying to slowly get closer. And we are gaining on him. You can see the slipstream is helping that. Obviously, on Daily Race A, you have a weak slipstream, which gives you more strength. When you're behind another car, it actually gives you more power, a lot more with the slipstream. You, you just get dragged along. And then we're going to go to the final corner now. Four temps behind. We gained five temps on him on that lap, half a second. But it's not going to be enough to go through a move. We can't send it from here. We're going to break the normal braking zone down to third gear. Take a tight line here just so the car behind doesn't try and rob that P2 from us on the final corner. And now it's just a drag race to the finishing line. And an enjoyable race. So my verdict on this week's race is... It's a, it's, it's a strange one. So Daily Race C is all about strategy. It's it's all about, you know, picking your time to pit, looking after the tyres. Um, it can be a frustrating race, but it can be an enjoyable one if you get the strategy right. Daily Race B is quite entertaining. A um, bit short on the race distance, obviously, but there might be a few different cars you can use for Daily Race B. Daily Race A is a mixture. You're going to have some really annoying races, but you're going to have a lot of fun as well. So, yeah, I think if you give them a go, Give them an experiment. You might actually enjoy some of this week's races. Um, I'm surprised how much I enjoyed the racing when it, for this video that we did. It was actually quite fun. So, yeah, we'll be definitely streaming these races throughout the week as usual. But, yeah, if you did enjoy this video, please do hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. And, yeah, hit that notification button and also comment in the comment section about what races you are racing this week, etc. And I will see you all soon for more content. Thanks again for watching, everyone.